SCP-7725. S is for saintly. Meeting your potential in-laws is often a nerve-wracking experience for anybody, and plenty of media over the decades has poked fun at the often awkward scenario. Parents are often protective of their children, and so any potential suitors are closely examined to make sure that they're suitable. SCP-7725 features this fairly mundane scenario of a man being brought to meet his girlfriend's parents, but since it's set in the SCP universe, it's anything but ordinary. SCP-7725 is the group designation for three interrelated anomalies in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. The first, 7725-A, is a two-story, four-room house in a mild state of disrepair, and all attempts to breach and enter the house have resulted in failure. The second, 7725-B, refers to an estimated 55 humanoid entities of varying ages, four canines, and three felines, bearing elongated bodies and extremities, all of which reside within the house. None have been observed to leave the structure. Third, 7725-C is a humanoid entity resembling a Caucasian female between the ages of 20 and 25, which manifests every 20 years during the month of November, whereupon it will exit the house. It behaves as a non-anomalous individual, and over the course of 6 to 11 months, it establishes itself as an active and prolific member of the local community's Christian religious organizations. During this time, it will court and seduce a male between ages 25 and 30 from said organizations, and will often make invitations to introduce their target to their parents, with the apparent purpose of converting them into a 7725-B entity. To date, all observed 7725-C instances have been found to possess the genetic material of prior iterations' victims. A D-Class was arranged to court a 7725-C instance for 11 months, and was outfitted with an audio-visual transmission device disguised as a necklace prior to entering the house. The girl giggles and says how excited she is for him to meet her parents. The D-Class replies that he's looking forward to it, and hopes that he can live up to their expectations of him. When the girl opens the door, however, the D-Class sees that the interior of the house is in disrepair, giving him pause. She urges him in, at which point he enters and she removes her shoes. A male entity appears, later identified as an elder version of a D-Class assigned to the prior C instance 20 years ago. The girl refers to him as Daddy and says that she brought James, who says that it's lovely to meet him. The D-Class begins to approach, but is stopped by the girl, who tells him to take his shoes off at the door. He does so and follows the girl into the next room, where he finds a twisting mass of elongated human bodies inside, intertwining in Archimedean spirals, knots, and tangles. They are wrapped around one another tightly, with some instances hair being knotted as well, and several pleasured groans are audible. The D-Class swears and exclaims in surprise, causing the father entity to call him out for bad language. The girl kisses the father entity on the cheek as it looks at the D-Class with an angered expression. Several of the heads scattered throughout the room on the ground begin moaning louder. The D-Class apologizes and says that maybe he should go, as he doesn't know if he's ready for this. The girl pouts and says that he promised that he would meet her family and the father entity recites Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. It asks him if he's seriously going to leave its daughter like this, and the D-Class replies, no, he was just surprised at how big their family is. The other instances quiet down and resume their low groaning, as the father entity says that they like to keep their loved ones close before reciting a verse from Acts, and he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. The D-Class replies that that one is a favorite of his, 
along with Ephesians 5 verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The girl exclaims that she knew that they would bond over their love of Christ, and she's so happy that her daddy likes him. The father entity replies that it never said that it likes him just yet, and being a man of God is good, but it ain't enough for it. The D-Class says that he promises that he doesn't mean any funny business with its daughter, but it says that they'll just have to wait and see what the missus thinks of him. The female entity that the father entity is wrapped around turns to reveal itself as an older version of the previous 7725-C instance, missing all of its teeth and its eyes are pitch black. It utters something incomprehensible, causing the D-Class to swear again. The father entity says that it won't tell him again about the swearing, as the girl embraces the mother entity's elongated neck. The D-Class mumbles an apology and says that this just feels like a bad dream, and he'll go along with it as maybe it is just a bad dream. The father entity tells him how rude it is to mumble, so the D-Class apologizes again and says that he was just stunned by its wife's beauty and if he didn't know any better, he would have assumed she was Janice's older sister. The mother entity says something incomprehensible again, and the father says that she's such a card. It also announces that dinner is almost ready, so it invites the D-Class into the kitchen, as the girl says that her mom made her special stew today. The father then tells the girl to put Fido up in his room so he doesn't beg at the table. The girl approaches the writhing pile of flesh and picks out the head of a dog. It licks its fingers and extends its elongated body forward as she exits the room with it. A few barks are audible as this happens, and the mother entity turns and moves its neck towards another room in the opposite direction. The father entity asks the D-Class if he wants to be with its baby girl. The two move towards the kitchen, stepping around the pile of twisting bodies in the living room. They enter the remains of a kitchen, as several arms extending from the living room are grabbing bowls and setting them on the table, and numerous heads lay on the ground, moaning and groaning at a low volume. The D-Class says that that was the plan, causing the father to ask if he suddenly doesn't love its daughter. The D-Class replies that no, he still loves her, but he guesses that he's just intimidated by it and its family. The father says that it's not here to judge him, as that's something only the Lord himself can do. The D-Class says that he just wants to marry its daughter and have a nice happy family, just like they do here. The father responds that that's good, and asks if he really believes in God. He replies that he does, and he believes that when he dies he will go to heaven and meet St. Peter at the pearly gates, and will be able to spend all eternity at the Lord's side. At this point the girl returns, and the father says that it's glad that he does, because it can't have no filthy atheists or Catholics marrying its little girl. It then asks if he knows what Janus means, as a slight squelching sound is heard, alongside a minor cracking. It says that it means God has been gracious, or gift from God. She is destined to live a life guided by God, and it can't have anyone or anything pose a risk to that. As a man of God to another, it asks if he understands what it means. The squelching and cracking grow louder as the D-Class says that he does. The father entity moves closer to the D-Class and asks if he knows what James means. The cracking and squelching sounds grow louder, and the video frame begins to tilt more and more. The entities laying on the ground begin to moan and groan louder. The D-Class says no, so the father moves closer, and says that it's a derivative of Jacob, and means supplanter and usurper. It asks if he's here to usurp it, and steal away its little girl, and lead her to a life of sin. The father moves even closer, and the squelching and cracking have reached a fever pitch. The video feed tilts further, showing another neck elongating and reaching towards the girls. The two entwine, and the camera is pulled up as they continue to wrap around one another. The D-Class is revealed to be elongating to match the other entities, as the ones on the ground are screaming. 
The D-Class exclaims that no, he just wanted to meet the parents of his girlfriend who he loves very much and swears that he's a man of God. The father moves away and the entities quiet down, their moans resolving into a soft thumping and wet suckling. It tells the D-Class to relax, as it's just pulling his leg, and welcomes him to the family. The camera moves further up the D-Class's elongated body, reaching the girl's neck. It strains momentarily before being crushed, and the video feed is lost. Honestly, if you just remove the body horror aspects of this one, it's actually a pretty normal situation, all things considered. The horrific flesh amalgamations that routinely go out to court and entrap a new victim are fairly respectable in most aspects. They take their shoes off at the door, they discourage swearing, and supposedly the mother makes a mean stew. They even have a pretty normal sense of humor, with the father antagonizing his would-be son-in-law just for laughs. It's hard to say what exactly would have happened had the D-Class tried to leave at any point, but the article doesn't mention any sort of mimetic effect, so it's possible that the family here isn't really doing anything wrong. After all, if you can't have a timeless, writhing flesh orgy in the comfort of your own living room with your family members, what does that say about this country?